The broken record, I know, but yet another busy severe weather day is expected across several regions of Texas, but the good news is this one's going to be the last for a while. Let's talk about in today's edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. Good morning, I'm Texas Storm Chasers Baldy and Chief David Reimer. It is Friday, the 28th of April, 2023. We've had about one day, give or take 18 hours, of quiet weather across Texas, but that break is about to come to a very dramatic and rowdy end as yet another severe weather event is expected to occur this afternoon into this evening. Some similarities to Wednesday, but several differences as well. Let's just go ahead and get into the severe weather outlook. These outlooks, again, are based on the probability of thunderstorms occurring within 25 miles of your location, your neck of the woods. Level 1's the lowest, level 5's the highest, and these are coverage levels. So level one, that's about a one in 10 to one in 20 chance you're going to have rowdy storms in your neck of the woods. A level two threat, that's the yellow, is about a one in five chance of rowdy storms in your neck of the woods. And yes, another level three risk today, an enhanced risk for severe storms. That's about a one in three chance of rowdy storms in your neck of the woods. Uh, like Wednesday, the strongest storms initially today that an develop and then we deal with semi-discrete storm modes for a couple hours could once again have very large to giant hail baseball softball grapefruit size again that is about three to four inches in diameter and is capable of doing a lot of bad things uh the threat for tornadoes today is low the potential for damaging straight line winds will increase as storms grow upscale into clusters or squall line, perhaps pretty quickly today. And that line's going to shove all the way south and southeast tonight, all the way to the coast and into South Texas, which is why we have such a expansive area of severe weather potential. So again, today's storms potential for big hail damaging straight line winds and potentially a few tornadoes uh, in terms of the tornado outlook from the storm prediction center you can see we do have uh generally speaking a very low threat for tornadoes today with a small area of low potential where the highest potential relatively for a few tornadoes could be maximized across portions of north texas and central texas kind of like the same area we saw on wednesday and again like wednesday we may have this threat area be shunted a bit to the south uh, this afternoon. Some model data is indicating that this event may be another one of these south of Interstate 20 events. So just like I mentioned Wednesday morning, not that it helped me come afternoon when folks were yiping about it, but we may have this shift a bit south of I-20 again, which could leave Texoma and DFW quiet, comparatively speaking. Or not. Again, we're just going to have to keep an eye on the sky. Unlike Wednesday, we're not going to have morning thunderstorms on the Red River to push an outflow boundary further south. Today's event is going to be driven by a dry line cold front. And as that cold front comes on in this afternoon pretty quickly, that's going to help spark off storms, but may also undercut them in the sense of cutting off some of their surface base inflow and causing them to grow upscale into a line or clusters quickly but let me go ahead and pause this let's just take a look at it i'm going to take us to about three o'clock you can see storms developing perhaps pretty early today about two to three p.m across western north texas down to the hill country kind of along highway 281 though again this could shift somewhat as we get into this afternoon so this is three o'clock these initial storms moving off to the east and here you can see by 4 o'clock, we've got what are severe supercells capable of producing damaging hail, uh, roughly from near the DFW Metroplex, Fort Worth, all the way down to uh, Fort Hood, Colleen, just west of Waco on I-14, just like we dealt with on Wednesday. As we continue on through 5 and 6 o'clock, you can see we actually start to grow upscale into a line pretty quickly here across the hill country, zipping, unzipping back down into the Edwards Plateau with some more scattered activity across north Texas and northeast Texas. So again, once we get into a squall line, the threat for the baseball softball size hail is going to come down. And we're going to start seeing an uptick in damaging straight line wind potential. And again, we could see a few tornadoes today. The threat's not high, but if we have one tornado today and it comes down your street, it's going to be a big deal. So, uh, you know, uh, 
pay attention. Here you go, by 7 o'clock, you can see some pretty nasty supercells across the Rio Grande in Mexico, but we have a line of strong to severe storms from near San Antonio, Austin, just north of Bryan College Station, while we have some scattered storms occurring behind the cold front across north Texas and northeast Texas. Some of those storms may still have some hail, though I would expect it to be more pocket change variety versus the baseballs. Uh, but that line of storms moving to the south, again, damaging straight line winds. Uh, some may be approaching 80 miles an hour, a threat for some hail, and perhaps some spin-up tornado threat with that. And then you can see as we get through 9 and 10 o'clock, that line of storms continues to move southeast very quickly into south Texas towards the coastal plains, the middle Texas coast. Southeast Texas kind of weakening, but we also have uh, elevated thunderstorms with some pocket change size hail behind all of that in north Texas. And then here you go by midnight, we've got storms uh, that's near Freeport showing a pretty nasty little storm there. It's not really little, but you, know, you get the point with weakening activity across southeast Texas and still some pretty good storms in north northeast Texas some locally heavy rainfall maybe some quarter to half dollar size hail and then here we go through 1 a.m. 2 a.m. you can see most organized storms out of our neck of the woods in terms of Texas still may have a few strong to severe storms but otherwise as we get into Saturday morning rain's going to start ending from west to east and here you can see by about noon we're done and by late afternoon, we're probably going to have clear skies across a vast majority of Texas with the last clouds pushing out of the Arklatex, the Piney Woods of East Texas, and the Golden Triangle. So Saturday afternoon to Saturday night is going to be a pretty nice day across Texas, although a bit cold or cool for late April with northwest winds behind that cold front. And then Sunday's looking pretty darn nice. And then this will be our last, hopefully... Our last severe weather threat for several days as we enter a quieter weather pattern that's going to take us through the weekend and at least the first half of next week. We might start getting back into some storm activity towards Thursday or Friday of next week, but you know what? At least we're going to get a break. I'm going to get to sleep a little bit, and I'm going to be happy about that. But as usual, we'll be here today keeping an eye on things with live severe weather coverage on all the social media platforms we're on in addition to storm chasing video. You can get your local weather forecast interactive weather radar, and the latest Texas weather information in the free Texas Storm Chasers mobile app. Just search for Texas Storm Chasers in the Apple app or Google Play Store. Again, we'll be keeping an eye on things here, and again, y'all better be doing the same unless you want to get hit on the head with hail later this afternoon, and trust me, it's not fun getting hit on the head with hail. I can speak from experience. It hurts, so please don't try to do that. All right, y'all have a good Friday. We'll talk to y'all later. God bless.